Hello, this is Tim Petrie, Extension Livestock Marketing Economist at NDSU. Today I'm going to give you just a quick price outlook and price risk management uh, meeting for you. Uh, just a couple of things I need to say. I'm recording this on uh, October 30th and things change. So if you're watching this in a month, there, things might be a lot different, but uh, just keep that in, that in mind. So I want to move along here. The three biggest things that affect calf prices and backgrounding probably for that matter are the supply of calves that we have the price of corn and then the price of fed cattle particularly in those futures market months where those backgrounded cattle will finish so we'll just start off here we're looking at our calf crop it should be no surprise to you that we have uh, relatively tight numbers of feeder cattle our cow herd has went down now for six straight years and corresponding uh, calf crops have went down there were uh, right now uh, this year at about 32,900 and uh, last year 33,600 and so we're off about 700,000 even fewer calves than we had back in 2014 when we had record high prices so no surprise that uh, we are at record high prices now and these lower supplies then are very supportive to prices so the next thing that affects calf prices and background at calf prices are corn prices I like to use Omaha corn prices because that's where our backgrounded cattle go to be finished. And so uh, when the feedlot's down there, they do not want to buy 550 balling calves. They want to buy 850 pound uh, steers and heifers that have been uh, backgrounded up here. And the reason why we do background a lot of cattle up here is because our corn is cheaper up here. For instance, at Omaha last week, the average price was 383 a bushel. Uh, today at uh, both a central and a western North Dakota ethanol plant had a negative 70 cent basis and paying 341 so uh, we can background our calves cheaper up here with cheaper corn and then send them down to Omaha to, to be fed out so corn prices have declined in the last couple of years quite significantly very supportive to calf prices you see on the top of the uh, chart there you change corn 10 cents a bushel change calf prices a buck in the opposite direction so declining corn prices have been also very supportive to calf prices and one of the reasons why we have a uh, record calf prices so then the other thing that affects calf prices are uh, fed steer prices like i said particularly in those futures uh, market months where we're uh when the background cattle will finish so here is the five market area weighted average price average price of fed steers in the u.s it would be right at where our nebraska feedlots uh, sell to right now at packing plants and so uh, again, my my charts are all color coded the same. Uh, green is 2021, purple 2022, blue 2023, and red 2024. And then next year's futures are the gold squares up there. The red squares are just this year's future. So we've had cyclical higher prices every year for fed cattle. No surprise again with the lower supplies and good demand for beef. And so you know the red line up there, we've been up there between uh 180 up to one over 190 we are last week we were at 190 and that's right where the october futures are and so again supportive to cash prices at those record high levels next year there's the futures and gold bars and uh you know similar a little bit above last year which we would expect cyclically there at the beginning of the year in the middle of the year the futures are a little risk off and a little cautious now down about uh 180 i think we can do better than that on fed cattle if all things uh, come together usda now is predicting 180 over 186 for an average price of fed cattle last year. So that would be higher than those futures are indicating. So again, uh, these uh, near or record high fed cattle prices uh, out even into next year are supportive to our backgrounded cattle coming out. So let's look at the calf prices to begin with. 
These are 550 to six weight calf prices would be what we would buy calves for or what our calves that we put into a backgrounding program that we own could sell for. And so the same story there, we've been increasing cyclically every year, this year up at record high prices. I realized they were higher here a couple months ago in midsummer when we don't really have any to sell. Uh, and they always fall off into fall. But again, we uh, are well supported at record high levels because of the lower numbers. Last week, we were at uh, the average price in North Dakota, and we'll look at the market report in a minute, was at uh, 301.37. And so, uh, you know, that's what our calves are worth or what we could buy them for. But again, a wide range in price that we'll look at in a minute. You know, we're seeing support, I think, from the Corn Belt cattle prices. Winter wheat grazing is virtually non-existent this year because it's so dry down there. But the Corn Belt buyers, when corn is low, tend to feed more cattle. They're smaller lots and can leave them empty when the feed, uh, when, when corn prices are high. But this year, they're interested in feeding cattle to put more value on their corn. So, you know, them coming into the market alone is supportive. And then, you know, the further on we go into the rest of the year when they're weaned and so on, there's support. But right Right there at around three dollars is the average price for, for what calves would be going into a backgrounding program now and what I will use for the rest of the time. So moving to the heavier weight yearling steers then uh, 750 to 800 pounds same story there cyclical higher record high prices you know this year uh, right up there about two uh, 62 for an average price on them uh, this week. And um, again, the futures is, we're interested in if we're doing price risk management into, you know, there's a January in the gold, there's a January and then a March, April, May, depending on what they come out, uh, right around 244 there. Uh, you know, there is, you know, we're, we're running a quite a nice positive basis on cattle now, more on that in a minute. So this is just what would be offered through an LRP or through the feeder cattle uh, options market right around 244 so that might be kind of an expected price there but given that we usually have, you know have a positive basis here in North Dakota so here's the actual market report for last week and I could talk about this for a half an hour I guess but I just got to hit some high points there so on the left hand side circled in purple there again is the average price for our 550 to six weight steers 301.37 circle there, but a wide range in prices 281 to 313, a $32 per hundred weight uh, range in prices there. So you know if we put 313 into a backgrounding budget, and Brian Parman is going to be using a number of budgets taking both steer and heifer calves up to a background through a backgrounding program. So if we use 313, maybe a little bit tougher to make money than if we go down a little bit so maybe for a you know a backgrounding program coming down to average or below average and, and you know doing some management things to make them up would be a way to pick up some money too but you know that's kind of all up to you the other thing that I just want to mention and we know this is that heifer calves are really discounted they're discounted on the average about $39 a hundred weight uh, right now on the 550 to sixes and every 50 pounds they gain they gain on steer prices go down to the bottom there that bottom arrow there were 900 pound steers last week brought 242 and and their heifer mates brought right at 242 so uh, we do keep a lot of heifers in North Dakota we background them Brian's going to give you some budgets for heifers I'm sure that we're going to uh, ba not only background a lot of steers, but we always keep a lot of heifers. And then the nice thing about heifers, there may be a really good demand for replacement heifers this uh, spring if it rains because of the low number of cows we have and the interest in herd rebuilding. So, you know, they could go in with a bull if necessary, or they can be sold to a feedlot. So a lot of flexibility on, on backgrounding heifers as well. So just uh, keep that in mind. You know, the futures market in particular has been very, very volatile. The futures market job has tried to predict prices, what will be in the future and a lot of things affecting it and has been much more volatile than the cash market. Here's the March feeder cattle uh, futures again that we use as a kind of a proxy for price risk management that we could look into what the calves might be worth in, in, um, in March. 
And so uh, I'm using yesterday's futures because I'm doing this, you know, this this morning on October 30th. But the March futures closed at 242.44 there. Uh, the actual cash settlement price was above that at four at two forty nine forty nine. You know that's what the futures market gets closed out is that cash settlement price. All open contracts tomorrow. The October feeder cattle futures close, and that's right where the October feeder cattle uh, futures market is. So uh, more on this cash settlement price in a minute. The important thing here using is is this is what LRP the LRP contracts are are based on the futures but are closed out on the cash settlement price but what i just want to mention here is and a little bit more on that in a minute is that we are running a positive basis because march futures there are at 249 and and the october futures again are at 250 but our 850s are bringing a 254 as uh you know the market report shows so just keep that in mind as we move along so here's our price cycle again we're at higher levels than we were back in 2014 at record high prices and we expect those uh, record high prices to continue for the next couple of years, but kind of level off, not go up at the rate they have in the past. And so, you know, that begs the question, you know, at record high prices, can we uh, background calves and, you know, is some price risk management necessary? And so uh, I think price risk management should be considered because of all the factors that can affect uh, prices. You know, is it going to be dry again? We're, uh, you know, have a lot of meat beef production what are corn prices going to do remember that you know change corn 10 cents feeder cattle go down a dollar what's our corn crop going to be and all the other things that could affect fed cattle prices so you know uh, having some uh, price risk management is good you know it's it's always better to have an lrp contract or, uh, and not need it than need it and not have one so during the increasing phase of the cattle price cycle as we saw prices can be volatile there's always a risk for lower prices so the best marketing strategy is uh, use a risk management tool that will lock in a floor price but leave the top side open because again we are short supplied on cattle and and fundamentals are good now and so you know there is a chance for higher prices but also a chance for lower prices so uh, you know get some floor price to cover us from a catastrophic decline and the way to do that is with livestock risk protection insurance and uh, or futures market options whichever one of those you prefer i'm just going to talk a little bit more about livestock risk protection insurance and uh, and 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 see how uh, some things we could use there so uh, LRP contracts are, uh, are, for, are for feeder cattle, two different weight groups there from 100 to 599 pounds for beef animals and then 600 to 1,000 pounds. Both contracts for both steers and heifers. Again, the feeder cattle futures market is for 800 pound uh, beef steers. And so we have some flexibility there in that we pick the weight of the uh, cattle that we want to lock in. And, and so uh, flexibility there and can do both beef steers and heifers. The insurance period, the closest LRP contract we can get is for 13 weeks, which would be a January. On the future side, there is an October, November, and then January, March, April, May, and so on futures contracts. So on LRP, the 13 week is January. I'm going to concentrate on saying that we're going to put 550 weight calves in now, take them out there towards the end of February. Uh, when they weigh 850 pounds and so the 17 week contract would be uh, something for us to look at but the 21 week contract would be March and the 26 April if you're feeding them longer whatever we can even go to the 47 week contract in September if we're going to summer graze cattle and, and have these uh, heavyweight cattle come out so uh, you know we just have to pick when you know how quick we're going to background them and, and what budget from Parman we're going to use 
And another advantage of LRP is we can we, we pick the number of head instead of a 50,000 pound feeder cattle futures contract. We can do just a few head, minimum of one, up to 12,000 head per policy and up to 25,000 uh, per year. And so that should cover all that we want to do. But we, you know, we could do a few at a time if we want to and, and, and trade up whatever you might want to do. So the big question that I always get from producers is how does that LRP price compare to my uh, cash prices that we get up here and in the current index as we saw in the previous chart there is 249.49 how does that compare to to uh, our prices up here that we kind of looked at and so again the cash settlement price is it comes out on the USDA web or the uh, CME website every day uh, based on USDA uh, market reports that I'll just show you the spreadsheet in a minute for all 700 99 pound medium and large one and two feeder steers at all those markets starting in North Dakota all through uh, Texas. So here's the CME cash index spreadsheet for last Thursday. I'm just using last Thursday because uh, both Napoleon and Dickinson were quoted. The three markets that are, that are quoted in North Dakota are, uh, are uh, Napoleon, Dickinson, and Mandan. And so, uh, and all the other markets are reported that day. And so you see back last Thursday, the cash settlement price was 249. The daily cash settlement price from all those markets, all those steers, all added up average 251.76. But it, but the, the, the settlement price is a seven day moving average. So it was uh, that days plus the previous six days. But if you go up to Napoleon and Dickinson, again, we have that positive basis. They would be the same price at both markets. Just the reason Dickinson is showing a higher price is because they just had a few head of lightweight 700, a little over 700 pounders. So they brought more than, you know, Napoleon had 225 and they were up near 800 pounds. So it's that weight difference. But otherwise, the, the same weight and grade of calves at those two markets would be the same. But it shows you that we have a positive basis. Then the other thing that's important is for you, you know, going back to that market report, you know, what weights do you sell and are they at the top of the market and the bar the bottom of the market and the weight rates that's the difficult thing for you to figure because we do have you know that positive basis here in North Dakota so so and and on an LRP contract you don't have to sell your calves on the day it matures you you don't even have to sell them you could you could uh, you know go on to slaughter weight and do an LRP contract on those if if you want to but you always get close closed out on that, that maturity. So in other words, last Thursday, all open LRP contracts for these uh, heavier weight yearling cattle would have got closed out at 249, regardless of whether you sold them or not and what they brought. So here was yesterday's, uh, came out yesterday afternoon, uh, October 29th for uh, these over 600 pound, these 600 to 1,000 pound cattle. Again, we're using 850 as a guide there. And so what USDA does is just look at the, uh, at the, uh, at the futures market for a coverage price. Uh, going across the top right on the left-hand side of that coverage price, their expected ending value for February 25th was 242.88, which is right down there what March futures closed at uh, yesterday at 242.42. And so uh, then if we go to the right where you see the other circle thing, your premium was 621 100 weight. So on an 850 pound steer, that would amount to 52.79 per head. And I know sometimes uh, uh, producers are a little bit leery of paying that much. So, you know, it's how much risk do you have? You need to talk to your banker and make the decision, you and your crop insurance agent and, and the banker of how much cover coverage you need. I just ran a quick break even uh, price and uh, for 550 
steers going in and 850 out there towards the end of February and I got right around a 230 a break even even with using this price risk management on the on the top and so you know you how much risk do you need and and so on is a decision that you and your lender have to make but if you're a little bit you know shy shy to use that uh, $52 ahead, you can come down and get a lower coverage price. You know, two thirty seventy four. If you have a two thirty break even, you could still cover your break even price. After all, you buy LRP insurance to put a floor price and and hope you you don't collect and just put a floor from a catastrophic events and you know cut your premium in half. So with that, you know, I I. Uh, I'm about out of time here. And so, you know, I certainly don't know what prices, you know, might uh, be. But I know they're going to be volatile in, in February or March or whatever they come out. So, you know, I think some uh, price risk management would be prudent, particularly depending on your level of risk. So uh, uh, with that, I am going to uh, I'll close my slide here, and if you have any questions, you could feel free to contact me. Mm -hmm.